thank you very much, Ruth, for joining us on this uh, Business, Wealth and Mindset podcast. So this is just a platform to get uh, uh, to capture inspirational stories of uh, people like yourselves who are doing well in business and excelling and uh, just sharing your journey, really, to, to inspire others who uh, will be looking to, to do the same. Uh, and uh, just to share your uh, successes, struggles, challenges, lessons, and everything. So we tend to uh, uh, sort of uh, begin by you just uh, giving us a bit of a snapshot of your journey, like, you know, from humble beginnings, you know, where you uh, come from, uh, the journey, growing up, family, school, up, up to here, and uh, everything else within that. And we just get to chat through that. So... Yeah, if it's uh, all right with you, just take us through that journey uh, of your um, where you started and how uh, you, you got here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Alex. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah. So my name is Ruth Ndera. I grew up in uh, Malawi, Blantyre, mm. and uh, last born in a family of five. So. Yeah, childhood was pretty okay. exciting. Coming from a very strict home, but still I could get in trouble because I was the outgoing one. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, my parents didn't like the idea of going to play, so they had to come up with a plan of keeping me home. <laughs> that was, uh, as I say, doing extra tutorials or... Mm -hmm cooking especially weekends it was a must you have to stay in the kitchen and do some stuff yeah but then again i had to um, another thing that i find memorable is that uh we used to go to the grandparents a lot in the village so mm. that's where i also learned a lot of things in my childhood which i really value up to today Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so being the last born, I was really spoiled, really. Yeah. <laughs> I got away with a lot, I should say. <laughs> but I, I still got disciplined if, uh, uh, if I broke the house rules. Yeah. <laughs> All right, okay. Yeah. Um, and then wh um, where did you go to school and uh, how, how, how did that go? <laughs> Okay, uh, so with my, yeah, I went to the primary school in Malawi and, uh, yeah, I, I also did my secondary education there. So mm -hmm. I had always wanted to be a, a lawyer. Not mm -hmm. really, be, uh, you know, I grew up, uh, I think, in my family, or as I would rem as far as I can remember, with most families, mm -hmm. it's like a career path is chosen for you. Yeah. Either you have to be a doctor, you have to be a lawyer, an accountant, or whatever it is. But it, there's, there's that path that is really set. Mm -hmm. So I was told, okay, we already have an accountant in the house. We already have, you know, a teacher in the house. We already have a nurse. So, you know. We're missing. And then there's a mug. <laughs> Yeah, and then <laughs> there's a magazine I used to read, which was by Dr. Ruth. Mm -hmm. And this woman was so beautiful, and she used to write interesting articles. So the idea of being Dr. Ruth also excited me. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I thought, okay, why can't I be Dr. Ruth? But then, yeah. honestly, I was one of those children that when I was ill and taken into hospital, I would run away. At the sight of a syringe, I would run away. Mm. So I started thinking, how can I think of becoming a doctor and I can't even stand the needle? Every time I go into the hospital, I'm running out of the room. <laughs> so the safest option now was to say, okay, I will become a lawyer. Mm. And it, beca it became quite challenging because once you announce that dream in the family that, oh, this is what I want to be, you're already seen that way. Even the name in the house changes. It's like, yeah. oh, our lawyer. <laughs> A lawyer in the house, yeah. A lawyer in the house, yeah. So unfortunately, I mean, when the results came out, the secondary results came out, I didn't do that well. I think I became, I became, I became playful, I should say. Yeah. The, the next safest option was to find a, a university to South Africa where I did my A-levels and then carried on to do my law degree. 
But mm -hmm. in my second year, I got convinced because I, I had visited UK. So I got excited about the idea when I saw that people who were students were also able to work. But I didn't get to ask much. And even when I was asking the ones, I, the people I, I knew, they would say, oh, it's easier to work here when you're a student. And my, mm -hmm. you when I was studying in South Africa as an international student, I understand if I go to the United Kingdom, I'll be able to work and that will even be easier for you because I'll be able to pay my own fees and then um, just be able to support myself. Unlike mm -hmm. in South Africa where I was totally depending on my parents. And, you know, my dad was not convinced really. But yeah. anyway, in the end, they gave in and they allowed me to come here. Oh, my goodness. Then the reality hit. <laughs> <laughs> A completely, completely different world to what you had imagined, yeah? A completely different world to what I had imagined and I just thought, okay, and then there's visas to deal with, the student, and even with the student, nobody had told me that as a student, they're only allowed to do 20 hours a week. And so how do you survive on 20 hours a week, <laughs> being able to pay your fees and rent and all the bills? Hmm. So yeah, that's when I decided to take a gap year. I thought, okay, if I take a gap year, I'll be able to raise money. Yeah and uh, <laughs> be able to go back to uni the following year mm. but oh my goodness one challenge just led to the other and it was not as easy as i thought yeah. uh, it was just yeah too much but then um on the light on the positive side i found that the area i was living some of the colleges they were offering free courses mm -hmm. so because i knew okay i'm in this country for to study but i'm not able to carry on with my law degree why can't I just go and do something to pass time? So I used to do probably two or three jobs, but then in between, I, would, I, can sac I thought I can sacrifice two, three hours in a day and go and do something. So mm -hmm. I used to do, so I used to go to my local college where I, uh, I started doing a course in hospitality, hospitality and um, catering. I also did business administration. So I was just picking courses here and there to keep me going. It didn't matter to me whether they were just going on for six months or a year or two yeah. years, but I just, whatever opportunity was there that was offered for free, I was able to do that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Wow. That, that, that's great. Yeah. So, I mean, your, your, your story is characterized by uh, you know, having a vision of something you believed you're coming to and then finding it's a bit different to what you imagine. But uh, you, yeah. you still picked out the opportunities within that to to make something of, of yourself. You know, <laughs> faced yes, with that I, challenge, you know, because, uh, you know, other people would just uh, maybe just give up and think, you know, it's, uh, this is hard, I'll just go back to South Africa or go back and do something. Mm. But uh, you, you got stuck in in there and uh, reinvented yourself by doing something did you did you have yeah. like, like uh, people you knew here who would support you as well and encourage you and help you to um pursue other things the things that you were you did in the end <clears throat> um in terms of the careers i was doing or uh, yeah or pe mean? people that you know like either fellow malawians or or any people who would be like mentors or help you with the uh, direction of what you should you should do given the challenges you you are facing <clears throat> unfortunately at that time i didn't have and mm -hmm. um it it was the case of oh why are you bothered and maybe most of the people i mean i was not in an area where there were so many people yeah and you also i i, I should also say maybe the few people i knew they'll be like oh why are you bothering just go and do the jobs that everyone is doing Mm -hmm. But I found that quite frustrating because I was thinking, I'm here on a mission. This is not what I came for. <laughs> this is not what I signed up for. And they're like, oh, no, just do what everyone is doing. We all came like this. But then, you know. Yeah. But at the same time, there was also fear, not knowing who to talk to and not knowing how that's going to be. I mean, you, you there was that fear, I should say, like, oh, if I talk to someone, am I not going to put myself into trouble? Yeah. Am I not going to 
be sent back home. And again, there was that shame that if I go back home, will I not be seen as a failure? Mind you, I already told you my dad was against the idea because mm. he thought, why can't you just stay in South Africa and finish? So now how do I go back and say, oh, <laughs> what you want me? I think now reality is hitting in. So it was quite challenging, really, yeah. uh, not knowing. But I just had to do some self, you know, I had to do my own research, self-education, and just reading stuff and how I can find my way through the system and be able to to stand. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Because mm. uh, in those situations, just like you found out, there's still opportunities within here which you managed to look into and uh, and get mm. them to actually help you as well. So how how did that then progress? Did you eventually come back to your law degree or? How did things move on? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, uh, I think after no, yeah, after a few years, I realized that no, I may have to. Okay, what was happening is because then I I I started getting to know people, people who were at the university who I, um, I thought okay, these were going to be my classmates. I would go to the same church. So every time we had events, I would always say, "Oh, I'll be the one cooking and all that." So everyone would enjoy the food. So mind you, with the uh, the courses that I had done, I realized that I was so passionate about that. And remember, I was also saying, growing up, my parents didn't like the idea of going out. So that passion for cooking, I mean, had had been there from childhood now going coming here for a degree i found that cooking is what kept me going any given opportunity any function i'll find myself cooking mm. and then i thought you know what why don't i just be doing a little something out of here so then i would bake cakes i would make birthday cakes and sell them and all that and mm. i just i just go to a point where i said oh i remember one day i went to um a business seminar and uh, the guy was talking actually it was a church conference and the pastor was like oh he actually narrated the path like the way i've just said that oh, especially you people you've been given careers you want to be a doctor you want to be this mm. but your hands are gifted why can't you just look at your hands and say you can make money out of this it's not always about having a white collar job and all that so i looked at him as like is this guy talking to me and he actually said, oh, some of you, when you cook food, people will actually lick the plates because your food is good. Do you know you can make money out of that? Mm. Uh, it was a very powerful session. And I just thought, well, it was the scales just fell off my eyes. And I thought, you know what? This guy is talking to me. So at that point, I started, give, I started accepting that, oh, probably I've been doing, I've been following a dream or I've been talking about this law career for the wrong reasons but the importance of following my passion mm -hmm. because i had to ask the why why did i want to go into law why did i want to become a lawyer was it because i'm passionate about it or just to fit in while with the cooking i wasn't struggling and of all the free courses that were being offered why did i the only thing that attracted me was that so mm -hmm. i just said you know this is it. So I started talking to my parents about it. They were not happy with the idea at first. They're like, ooh, <laughs> from a lawyer now to a, a chef. A this, chef. Is not, this is not on. <laughs> uh, okay. uh, actually, we don't even say chef. They say a cook. A cook. <laughs> I, I can imagine yeah. the disappointment. Yeah. Because the time, especially for us, you growing up in Malawi, the idea of yeah. the prestige of those uh, careers like law and accounting and you know they make the parents proud yeah. they say they have a daughter oh yes and all of that but oh, when yes. it's like a cook it's like something that's uh, <laughs> almost like frowned upon you know it's a different mentality yeah. kind of thinking it's a different it? yeah it's a different mm -hmm. mentality so even with friends they were laughing they're like oh my god you must be you must be going mad Mm. And how can you be a cook all the way from your country and here just to settle down to be a, a, a cook? Mm. I'm like, wow. Yeah. So, but I just thought, you know what? This is my life. This is me. Yeah. But then later on, my parents accepted the idea. They fully supported me and they just said, you know what? If this is what you want to do, go for it. Mm. 
So, yeah, and then uh, I, I just started, you know, building up. It was crazy. I would just, if, if I find industrial pots somewhere, I would buy them. If I find rice cookers, I would just, be, I, I, started, I just started buying stuff bit by bit. And in my mind still, I was thinking, okay, I will still have a job because I grew up in a home where both parents worked and we mm -hmm. still had a side hustle where there was a little business going on at home. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, I was still thinking, oh, um, I would still run, a, I would love to run a restaurant. I would love to have my own catering business, but I would still be working. Yeah. And now I look back, I'm thinking, who was I think that would be running that for me? <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I was just thinking you know yeah maybe i'll have some people doing that and i'll be still doing my job but mm. then what happened is and i i had children and while i was on uh, maternity leave i still i mean i was still able to do job uh, uh, working in, in in a college somewhere in london but then when i became pregnant and i was home looking after my children i was still able to do the cakes to cater for the small mm. events and all that mm. And then when I decided to go back to work, that's when the challenge hit me because yeah. I started struggling with child care. I see. And yeah, I started struggling with child care. I would leave my children uh, with a child mind around six in the morning so that I can go to work and the child mind will be the one to drop them at school. I would spend the whole day at work. By the time I get home, I pick them from the child minder around 6. We get home around 7, nearly 8 p.m. I was so exhausted. I was so tired. It was so tiring that I just thought, what am I doing to myself? Hmm. And um, I think as well, for me, when I look back, uh, another thing that I didn't mention is that when I was in my first year at university, I, I got pregnant with my firstborn. But when he was 10 months old, my parents said, you can carry on with the education. We don't want you to stop studying. So let's help you look after the child. So mm -hmm. they took my son when he was 10 months old. Yeah. And yeah, so you can, uh, I didn't have that uh, bond or that relationship. I missed out missing my, my child grow. I missed out on those milestones. I missed taking my child to school because he was home. I was busy studying. Mm -hmm. So when this pattern started of going to work early, leaving the children with a child minder. That experience really struck me hard. I said, mm. I'm not going to allow history to repeat itself. Yeah. Mm. It really hurt me. I said, it really hurt me that I, I, I mean, I had no choice then. I was, so, I was quite young and I know my parents wanted me to carry on with my education. Mm. But in this situation, I felt like I had more control. I had the power to make that decision whereby I can strike a balance somewhere yeah. where I'm, I don't feel like I'm neglecting my children, where I don't feel like I'm chasing money, but at the same time, I'm not, I'm losing the relationship that I want to have with my children. Mm. So I had a chat with my boss about it. And my boss said, Oh, do you want to do a part-time job? I said, no, mm. uh, I just want to resign. And he encouraged me, said, well, why don't you try a part-time job and see how it works? So I, mm. I, stopped working full-time, I tried part-time job so that I can now concentrate on the business. But still, it wasn't working because mm. there was that comfortability to think, oh, you know, even sometimes when some, a customer would come and say, we want you to do this, but because I know I've got a job somewhere, I would not put 100% effort mm. into it. Mm. Or sometimes someone wants food done on a weekend, but maybe that's the weekend I promised my boss I'll cover the hours that I couldn't cover during the week. Mm. So it was really difficult. So I just told my boss, you know what? Even this part-time job is not working. I'm resigning. said, Ruth, you're crazy. You are very, very crazy. Mm -hmm. You don't know. You don't even have customers and all that. How are you going to do this? I said, yeah. I don't know, but something has to be done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.